Good morning, everybody. And as usual, happy Saturday. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. I miss you guys, man. I miss you guys. All right. So for today's class, we are going to be needing one uh, stick or sorry, two sticks, one long and one short stick. Now, the focus is going to be on hip health. So a lot of the drills we're actually going to be doing today, or particularly for the strength training aspect, is actually going to be 90-90s. I haven't done a 90-90s drill in quite some time, uh, at least within the context of working on a, an entire series. So we're going to be working on some 90-90s. We're going to get into different positions, creating tension in different ways, working on internal and external rotation out of the 90-90s. So today's class is going to be pretty challenging. If you start cramping, which I know for a fact that I will, <laughs> don't be afraid to get out of it, okay? We're also going to need a kettlebell. Now, the kettlebell is simply just to hold the bottom of a deep squat. So a kettlebell or a dumbbell or whatever you happen to have available to you is going to be perfect to have. Also, if you have a pad to kneel on because we are going to be getting into some hip flexor stretches at the end, that'd be a nice thing to have. Now, we're going to focus on low, warming up the lower body and the spine specifically only for the warm-up. So let's go ahead and get into it. First thing I want to focus on is uh, posterior tilt. So we're going to go anterior, sorry, anterior posterior tilts or, or pelvic tilts here. So we're going to go with the nice good wide stance here. Feet are a little or wider than shoulder width actually. And I want my toes pointed forward. So I want the bottom of the stick angled in towards me. This is the short stick by the way. I'm going to have my hands roughly about chest height and I'm gonna drive my shoulders down and drive the stick into the floor about 20% here. Now from this position, I'm gonna do a posterior tilt. So I don't want movement in the spine or the hips. It's just coming from the pelvis. So drive the stick down 20%, do a posterior tilt, squeeze your glutes, drive your knees out, and then we're gonna to go to anterior tilt. And remember that movement is just coming from the pelvis. Posterior tilt, squeeze those glutes, anterior tilt posterior tilt just going to go back and forth anterior tilt posterior tilt anterior posterior anterior and posterior one more time good and ease off now we're going to go lateral tilt here so from this position here, same position, drive the stick down, hold a slight posterior tilt, bump your right hip up. You should feel that right glute fire. Now we're gonna go and bump the left hip up, left glute fires, right hip drops. Bump the right, excellent, left, right, breathe, left, right, and left, back to center, and ease off. Now we're gonna work on the adductor. So I'm gonna change the camera angle a little bit. Some of the stuff we're gonna do, we're actually gonna be on the floor here. So I'm gonna step back, okay? I'm gonna go with my right knee down, left leg is gonna be stretched out. Now I'm on turf, so my left leg's gonna slide. So I'm gonna slide this left foot out, and I want my left foot to be pointed forward here. The six is going to be on my right side. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to rock back into a, almost like, a, like you're sitting your glute on your heel. All right now, as we do this, you want to maintain a good neutral uh, pelvis. So you don't want to go into excessive anterior or excessive posterior. We just want to work on keeping that pelvis relatively neutral here. So sticks on my right shoulder, right hands down at the bottom here, left leg is out. I want to very lightly drive my foot into the floor. So I'm going to get that adductor line nice and active here. And then I'm going to sink my hips back, working my way going down towards the bottom of the stick. Now what we're looking for is a stretch in that adductor line. Breathe. Use your hands to walk back up the stick. Nice and tall, we're gonna go again. Sorry, flip this thing around. So drive those hips back. Make sure you're lightly driving that foot into the floor, only about 
just to keep a little bit of activation. Breathe. Excellent. Walk your hands back up. Let's go one more time. Slide those hands down, hips back. Try to sink deeper into to it. Sorry, got the hiccups. Walk your hands back up. Excellent. We're going to slowly come out. Now we're going to switch sides. So I'll actually turn to the side here. So left leg is going to be down, or left knee is going to be down. Right foot's going to be out. Okay. Also, you want this leg to be out to the side. You don't want it behind you because that kind of changes the stretch a little bit. We're just trying to get the general area of the, the general adductor. We're not trying to get the short adductor, at least not right now. So we're going to go stick on the left shoulder here. We'll slide that foot out. I'm going to lightly drive that right leg down. Remember to drive that leg down 10%. And I'm going to sink my hips back. Bring it towards the bottom. So you'll probably notice one side feels a little tighter than the other. That's normal. Just focus on that breathing. Light activation. Walk your hands back up. Excellent. Let's go again. Sink those hips back. Breathe. Walk those hands back up. Excellent. Let's go one more time. Get a nice deep stretch. Walk those hands back up. Nice and easy. And walk that foot in. Now we're going to go with kind of like the guitar hero a bit, but we're actually not gonna use a stick to create tension. And so what we're gonna do here, this is gonna be a hip opener specifically. So this works on that external rotation. So if you're missing external rotation, this is a really, really good drill to kind of actually warm up uh, that external rotation movement. And so what's gonna be important here, and I'll actually show the setup from the side, is so I'm gonna start my left leg out, my right knee is down. My left foot is roughly in line with my right knee. So I want the heel to be in line with the knee. Now what I want you to do, instead of pointing the foot straight out, I want you to slightly angle it forward just a bit. So what we're looking for here is to get this glute to fire as we sink into the stretch. You should be feeling that, that side fire. So if my left leg's out, left glute should be firing. So what I'm gonna do from here, I'm gonna have the stick kind of across my midline a little bit. So I'm gonna be slightly rotated. And what I'm gonna do from this position is I'm going to first drive the stick down 30%. And then I'm gonna actively drive my left knee back. So if somebody was had their hand on the back of my this knee, I wanna drive against that hand and hold that position. That glute fires. And then I'm going to sink into that left hip, trying to get it to fire the entire time. Positioning wise, we want to make sure we're as upright as we can be. You don't want to end up being here. You want to bring those hips forward. Nice, good, upright position. Getting this left glute to fire. Three, two, one. Excellent. We're going to come out. Drive that knee back. Get that glute to fire. Sink into it again. Hold. So driving that stick down. Three, two, one. One, knees off, good, activate, drive that left knee back, sink into it, nice, good, tall position, three, two, one, knees off, excellent, and relax. Let's go ahead and switch sides. So now I'm gonna go left knee down, right, le right leg, uh, foot is out, remember, slightly point those toes forward. So it should be at a really, really slight forward angle. Not much, you don't wanna end up being here. This is not the position we wanna to get to. So from here, six going across. I wanna drive that right knee back. 
drive this stick down, sink into it, breathe. Three, two, one, we're gonna ease off, nice and slow. Let's go to it again, drive that right knee back, open that hip up, right glute fires, sink into it. Breathe. Three, two, one. Excellent. Ease off. We're going to go one more time here, folks. Drive that right knee back. Drive the stick down. Sink into it. Remember, we're driving those hips forward here. Three, two, one. Excellent. And ease off. Wonderful. Good. Now we're gonna place the short stick down. We're gonna grab the long stick here. We're gonna to go to the floor. So if you have the corner of a wall or something stable to press into, this is gonna be that time to get to it. So I'm gonna start on my left side. Everybody's kind of might be a little familiar with this one. So I'm gonna have my left, so my left hip is on the floor. So I want the top of uh, my left foot on the top of the stick here. Right leg is going to be woven under. All right, so the good thing about this is we can actually add in a little bit of a glute stretch as we actually go into that thoracic rotation. So we're trying to loosen up that spine a little bit, right? Now, I'm going to keep my right knee up at roughly 90 degrees. You can go here, it's not gonna create the same effect though. So bring that knee up to roughly about hip level. Now from here with this left hand on the end of the stick, I want to pull that left hand down towards the floor. I'm going to take my right hand. I'm going to come up and rotate over. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale. I'm going to come back up and over and ease off. Now this is where we're gonna add in uh, that little bit more of a glute stretch by actually straightening out that right knee. And you'll see in a second. So we're gonna get in position, pull this left hand down towards the floor. We're going to open up to the right, rotate, try to get that right shoulder to the floor. Now straighten your right knee out. As you're still pulling that left hand down, you're gonna feel a little bit of a stretch on that outer glute. Excellent, bend that right knee back in. Come back up and over. We're gonna go one more time here, folks, one more time. Pull down, open up and rotate to the right. Straighten that right knee out. Good, back in, over, and ease off. Let's go ahead and switch. And so you might get a slight stretch, you might get a big stretch. It might all depend on how tight that glute is. So don't be alarmed if you're doing that and you're like, oh, I'm not really getting that much of a stretch. That's okay, that's not a bad thing, all right? But if you're getting a really, really big stretch, that means that that rotational aspect in the hip is just super duper tight. So now I'm on my right side, my right foot's on top of the stick, left leg is under the stick here, right hand's on the tip, on the end of the stick. I'm gonna pull down with that right hand, I'm gonna rotate up and over with the left. Breathe. Excellent, come back up and over, ease off. We're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna straighten that leg out after we get that rotation. So pull that right hand down, open up, rotate to the left. Remember, we're trying to get the shoulder down to the floor. Now straighten that left knee out, extend the knee.
bend the knee, good, come back up and over, and ease off. Let's go one more time. Pull the stick down, open up and rotate to the left, get that left shoulder to the floor, deep breath in, exhale, straighten that left knee out, good, bend the knee back in, come back up and over, and ease off, excellent. Good. Now we're gonna get into, really quick, a little bit of cat camel here. This is just to get a little bit more communication between the spine and the brain. So we're gonna be in a quadruped position. I'm actually gonna to go to the side here. We don't need the stick for this one. There's gonna be a really quick flow going in and out of extension here. However, I want you to segment at that low back first. So I'm gonna go with my hands under my shoulders. All right, I don't want my hands here. I want them to be directly under my shoulders. I want my knees to be, for the most part, under my hips. So adjust as you need to. Now from this position, keep your arms straight. Do not let your arms bend. So uh, elbows extended. And from this position here, I'm going to tuck my pelvis first. So I'm gonna flex my lumbar spine. So go into spinal flexion. And then I'm going to drive my hands into the floor as I create flexion in the thoracic spine. Tucking my head in, breathe. Now I'm going to move at the low back again. I'm going to extend through the low back and work up the spine. Looking up, I'm gonna flex, round that spine, tuck the pelvis. Try to get as much flexion as you can, drive that Thoracic spine up towards the ceiling. Now go into extension. And ease off, just a little bit. Now we're gonna go with lateral flexion here. Now the lateral flexion, the spine works in 360 degrees. It's not just flexion extension, but this movement here. So let's go ahead and warm that up. Now to do this, you wanna look at connecting or looking to connect the hip and the shoulder. So I wanna shorten this side, which is gonna lengthen this side here. So hands are still under the shoulders. The alignment is still the same. Now from here, you wanna go with the neutral spine, right? And so I don't wanna be an extension, I kind of be relatively neutral, so kind of find that neutral position. Once you do, I'm going to laterally flex to my right, so I'm going to drive my right shoulder down towards my right hip and drive my hip up towards my shoulder. And as I do that, I'm actually going to pick my left shoulder up towards my ear, so I'm getting a lot of actual lateral flexion here. And then I'm gonna go over to the other side. I'm gonna to try to connect my left shoulder and left hip and I'm gonna drive that right shoulder up towards my ear. Excellent. Laterally flex to the right. Try to connect that right shoulder and right hip. Bring that left shoulder up towards the ear. Excellent. Now to the left, try to connect that left shoulder, left hip. Drive that right shoulder up towards the ear. Excellent. Back to center and ease off. Good. So now again, it's just to create a little bit more communication between the brain and the spine. So since we're about to get into some 9090s, let's go ahead and have some good fun with that. Now for the 9090s, we're not gonna use the sticks the entire time, but we are gonna add the sticks in just to create a little bit more tension on those lines that's gonna be necessary in order to do some of the drills and also work on connecting those obliques, particularly for the internal rotation. So. It's gonna be fun here, folks. So let's go ahead and grab our short stick. We don't need a long one. And we're gonna to go to the floor here. I am going to actually, sorry, change the angle of the camera a bit. Just so we're looking just about eye to eye. All right. So one hip's gonna be tighter than the other. 
depending on what um, imbalances you may or may not have, right? So we're just gonna start, typically I'll tell people to start on whatever side tends to be tightest, right? If your left, uh, having that left uh, leg forward is tighter, I will tell, tell you to typically start on that, but we're just gonna go with arbitrarily having our left leg forward first. So po position wise or how you set up for it, we got two different ways to do it, right? We can go with the more true 90-90, having our front knee and back knee bent at 90 degrees. So if I turn to the side, this is what it looks like, right? We also have our shin box. So if this is too challenging or, or it's just super tight, you can't get into this position, then you can pull this left leg in and pull this right foot in, get into a shin box, and we can still work on those same drills from this position. You're just changing the leverages a little bit to make it more attainable for what you can or cannot do at that point in time. Now, I'm gonna turn forward, so I'm gonna go with the 90-90 position today. Now, left leg is forward, right leg is back. I'm going to use my left hand to kind of prop myself up. Now, from this position here, I want to create force on both hips. So we got external rotation on the front, internal rotation on the back. And so from this position, I'm going to use my left hand to prop myself upright, right? You don't want to end up being here. You want to push off. So you're going to actively push off that side, get to a nice, good upright position. I'm going to drive both legs into the floor. So I'm going to drop both legs down at 40%, just 40. Now from this position here, we're going to have our right hand on our chest and we're going to hinge. Now you want to try to keep your back as straight as you can. Nice, good neutral spine. You're going to feel a stretch on that left glute, that external rotate, uh, those external rotator tissues. Hold. We're gonna come back up, excellent. We're gonna do that same thing again. So drive both legs down 40% and hinge. Try to get a little further if you can. Breathe, should feel like a real nice stretch there. Come back up, excellent, ease off. We're gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna move my left hand forward a little bit more, okay? Same thing, drive both legs down 40% and then hinge down. So I'm gonna place my right hand out because I can get my torso a little closer to my femur. Breathe, three, two, one, excellent. Back up and ease off. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my hands and I'm gonna actually grab my ankle on both sides here. Now I'm gonna to rotate towards my right leg. So again, we're getting internal rotation on this right hip. So I'm gonna grab my left ankle here and I can use that as a way to kind of leverage pulling upright in this position, right? The little tips and tricks. So I'm gonna grab my left ankle, I'm gonna grab my right ankle. I'm going to pull myself into a tall upright position here we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna drive both legs down, 40%. So drive both legs into the floor, 40%. Try to make sure you're in a nice, good, tall position. Breathe. Excellent, ease off. Good. We're gonna do that two more times. Again, we're just kind of warming up the hips here. So grab both ankles, leverage yourself upright, drive both legs into the floor, Breathe, three, two, one, ease off. Good, let's go one more time here, folks. You're doing really good, really good. All right, pull yourself in that upright position, drop both legs down and push. Breathe, three, two, one, excellent, and ease off. Wonderful, now, so we're gonna stay in this side here. Now, like I said, we're gonna work on internal and external rotation here. So for this drill, we're gonna have the stick in our right hand. Since so our right leg's back, we're gonna have it in our right hand. This is just to make sure that we can connect that lateral side on the right, working on this back hip, because that's the hip we're really gonna be working on and focusing on here. 
Now, for a lot of people that have internal rotation issues, I am one of them. This internal rotation drill is gonna be super tough. So what we can do to make it a little bit easier or actually work with that internal rotation is actually shifting our weight forward a little bit. So if I turn to the side and I'm in this position here, I want to create a little bit of a hinge. This allows me to really actively get that internal rotation or bringing my foot up off the floor. However, we still need to drive this right knee down into the floor here. So I'm gonna to turn to the side just a little bit, right? Stick's gonna be in my right hand. I want the stick to be at three o'clock, right? Not four, not five, not six, not two. I want it at three. So I want it to go directly to the side, again, to really make sure I'm getting that right lateral, uh, the right lateral chain to really fire, so those obliques, which is gonna work with helping of activating that side a bit more. We're gonna work on internal rotation first. We're gonna do eight repetitions here. So having the stick at three o'clock, I'm going to have my left hand on the floor to prop me up into a nice good upright position. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lean forward a bit. All right, so I'm almost gonna kind of get into that Superman position here. I'm gonna drive that right stick down into the floor. You should be feeling those obliques fire. Now drive that right knee into the floor as well. And now we're gonna to try to lift that right foot off the floor without lifting the right knee. So from here, I'm gonna bring it up. That's one. Drive the stick into the ground, 50%. Rotate up, that's two. You wanna hold the range for a second. Up, three, good. Up, four, up, five, so three more, up, six, let's go two more, up, seven, one more time, up, and eight. Excellent, ease off, take a second. And now we're gonna work with external rotation. So now we're gonna do the opposite. So for this, we're still doing that same thing, having to stick in the right hand, but instead of trying to get the foot off the floor and keeping the knee down, we're now gonna keep the foot down and bring that knee up as high as we can. The caveat to that is you're going to want to rotate. The objective here is to not rotate to one side anywhere here. If we're starting in this position here, I wanna make sure that you're not moving from this position as we bring that knee up. You're gonna feel a whole lot of tension in that hip. That's the point. We're gonna to need to drive that front leg down really, really hard in order for one, to keep that constant tension throughout the hips, but for two, to keep us from actually starting to rotate a little bit. So I'm gonna to turn to the side again, just a little bit, right? Use that left hand to prop yourself upright. And I wanna be upright, actually upright for this position here. I don't wanna be hinged. That creates a little bit of a different challenge. Now from here, I wanna drive that right stick down, 50%, drive that front knee into the floor hard, now we're gonna bring that right knee up. You're gonna feel those obliques fire. Then back down, it's one, up, two, up, three, up, four, up, five, up, six, up, seven, and up, eight, ease off, excellent. Go ahead and come out of position. Now, we're gonna switch over to the other side, so if you need to kinda stride back and forth a little bit, loosen up those hips, do not be afraid to do so. The hips can feel a little, a little funky at first, but again, we're trying to get that internal, external rotation and work on the hips, work on strengthening them in that really, you know, particularly in that position, but that does have some carryover in terms of performance to other things we that you can or will be doing for that particular day. Honestly, roughly about 15 minutes of 90-90s a few times a week, it's pretty helpful. Or even if you're starting off at five to 10 minutes, it's actually pretty dang good. All right, now we're gonna switch sides. So we're gonna go right leg forward, left leg back again, 
set up in whatever way is most comfortable for you. If you go with the shin box, don't be afraid to stick with the shin box. If you want to go 90-90s to try it out a little bit here and there, don't be afraid to do that too, right? Have some fun with it. All right, now, I'm gonna have the stick on my left side because don't need it in the right hand. So from here, we're gonna do that same thing, right? We're kind of propping ourselves up with that right hand and we're gonna drive both legs into the floor 40% and we're going to hinge forward. So the drill we did earlier, where we were working with opening up the hip, that's a good lead in into these 90-90s, all right? So that right, or so whatever hip is forward is gonna have a little bit more external rotation or at least um, ability to get into external rotation a little bit more. So it's a nice um, warm up for the warm ups. <laughs> gonna come back up, good. We're gonna go two more here. Drive both stick, or both legs down, sorry not sticks, we don't got any sticks here, and hinge forward. Breathe, back up, excellent, he's off. I'm gonna bring that right hand forward a little bit more, drive both legs down and hinge. Get a nice big stretch in that glute. Back up. Excellent, he's off. We're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna rotate, grab the ankles here. Yeah. Remember, pull yourself into the upright position. So try to get to a nice, good, tall position here. Drop both legs down and push. Three, two, one, excellent, he's off. Also, if you can't actually rotate and grab your hands here, you can place your hands right behind your back. That's another alternative if you don't have the uh, ability to get there if you're falling back too much. Hands on the ankles here, drop both legs down, pull yourself upright, 40%. Two, one, excellent, ease off. Doing good, folks. We're gonna go one more time here. Drop both legs down, pull yourself up. Breathe. Good, three, two, one, excellent, and ease off. Now we're gonna get into that internal hip rotation. Also, again, just as usual, kind of want to pay attention to what side is harder than the other. So typically for me, my left hip does not rotate, internally rotate as good as my right hip does. So well, what, a way to kind of track your progress for one is to make sure you're actually, like if you're in front of a mirror or get a video of yourself actually doing this, you'll kind of see what your progress is over time as you practice this particular drill. So sticks in the left hand, I'm gonna, have, it's on, a, on my left side, it's at nine o'clock on this side. And again, remember, we wanna hinge forward, right? To make it a little easier. Or if you're super mobile, you can be, be in this upright position and still work on getting that foot off the floor. So from here, I'm gonna hinge forward, arm is out, six, three o'clock, or nine o'clock, sorry. Drive the stick down 50%, and I wanna drive that left knee into the floor. Now we're gonna internally rotate, one, up, two, up, three, up, four, up, five, up, six, up, seven, one more time, up, and eight. Good. Now we're going to get that external rotation. So remember, you need to drive this front leg down. So drive that front leg down, stick is still at nine o'clock. Drive the stick down 50%. Drive that front knee down really, really hard, as hard as you need to in order to keep that position. Now we're gonna lift that left knee. One, drive that stick down hard. Do not let that tension off. Up, 
two, up, three, up, four, up, five, up, six, up, seven, one more time, and up, eight. Excellent. Ease off. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and get out of position. Now, this is where you grab, you want to grab a kettlebell or a dumbbell, or you can even simply use a rack if you happen to have one to kind of pull yourself down into a really deep squat. Now, this isn't us squatting for multiple reps, and you only want to grab a weight that you can actually manage. Nothing too heavy. So we're gonna do a goblet, right? So this is gonna be a front-loaded thing or front-loaded squat. So you'll be able to leverage uh, that front load a little bit to work deeper into it, right? Now go with whatever squat, whatever your squat stance is, whether that be narrow, whether that be super wide, go with whatever feels most comfortable for you and your hips. And so, I'm gonna go with my typical squat stance, which is a little wider than shoulder width. My toe angle is flared out. This is me personally, this is what I do. I'm gonna grab kettlebell, bring it into a gobble position. Now from this position, drive your big toe into the floor, right, hard, jam it down. Making sure you got a good active foot. Now I'm going to squat down, nice and deep. Sink into it as deep as I can, keeping a nice, good, upright posture, driving those knees out, elbows in. Excellent. I'm gonna place the kettlebell down on the floor in front, and I just wanna hold this position here. So driving those knees out, trying to maintain a good, nice, neutral spine, good posture. Then I'm gonna stand up without the kettlebell. Right, it's just really getting our body a little bit more used to and aware of that deep squat position. Your hips, like I said, are gonna feel a little funky, but we just spent time not only opening up and stretching the tissues, but also activating those tissues. So you wanna kind of load it at least a slight bit right after you do it, just so you can keep um, all the, basically all the work you just did, right? So let's do it one more time, okay? Get that foot position down. You can also play around with your foot position too as you actually do this. Get into that gobble position. Drive the big toe down. Squat. Nice and deep. You might notice it feels a little bit better the second time around, getting a little deeper into the squat. Breathe. Place that kettlebell down. Keep a good position. Breathe. Three, two, one, and we're gonna stand up. Excellent, good. Super simple. Now we just added a little bit of load. Got quite a bit of tension in that position. You're just trying to work on keeping that position. So your hips might feel a little tired, right? So now we're gonna do a little bit of stretching just to kind of loosen everything up a bit. So we're gonna focus on just two different stretches. First one's gonna be stretching out the hip flexor and those anterior tissues. The second stretch is gonna be stretching out the adductors, getting those to loosen up. So we're gonna need that long stick in a little bit, but right now we're gonna go with the short stick. So I'm gonna have my right leg down or right knee down, and I'm gonna have my left foot forward. Now, the distance I got it forward, this is gonna be something that kind of depends on you, right? but you don't really need a whole lot of movement for this because when we're doing a hip flexor stretch, we don't want this to happen, right? Everything uniformly moves, right? The hips move forward, but the torso is staying stacked over the hips. The spine isn't behind the hips. So that's something to kind of be aware of as we go into this here. So I'll start here. And we're just gonna start with the basic, super simple stretch here. 
Now, the bottom of the stick is basically in line with my uh, arch of my left foot. So front foot here, arms are gonna be straight. Now from this position, I wanna drive, I wanna have both hands on the stick at roughly about chest height. I'm gonna grip the stick and drive it down 20%, keeping those shoulders down. Now I'm gonna drive my back foot, which is plantar flex, into the floor. You're gonna feel tension in those quads a bit. Now from this position, I'm going to do a posterior pelvic tilt and squeeze my right glute. Breathe. You're already gonna get a nice stretch here, right? We don't need a whole lot of movement or shifting forward in the hip flexor stretch much if you're pretty tight, right? This is gonna be a good enough stretch. And ease off. We're gonna do that again. Let's go one more time, then we'll switch sides. Drive the stick down, drive the back foot into the floor, tuck your pelvis and squeeze your glute. So posterior pelvic tilt. And also try not to let this happen. Again, we're still nice and tall. Three, two, one, excellent, and ease off. Let's go ahead and switch sides. I'm gonna go right foot forward, left leg back, Stick is in the middle, switch your hands. Right, drive the stick down, drive the back foot down, and tuck your pelvis and squeeze your glute. Three, two, one, excellent, ease off. Wonderful, let's go one more time. We're gonna stretch out the mad doctor. You're gonna do a floor straddle stretch. Drive the stick down, drive the back foot down, tuck your pelvis and squeeze your glute. Breathe, deep breaths. Three, two, one, excellent, and ease off. Now, we're gonna take our long stick here. So for me, typically, I would go with a pro model. That just works better for me. I'm gonna go with the six foot stick. Now, as we're in this position, we're really using the stick for one to create tension, but also to get our spine into a neutral position, all right? So it's gonna create a much bigger stretch on the adductors. The main thing with this though, is you don't want your feet to dump out or your legs to externally rotate. You want your toes pointed up towards the ceiling to keep them effectively neutral, right? Or more internally rotated to get into those adductors. So try to keep that in mind as we go into this here. So I have my feet out. I have the stick in, uh, where the arches of my, my feet are. My hands are out in front. And my hands are roughly about shoulder width. You can go a little wider if you want to, right? If you go wider, you have a little bit more of a forward position. But if it's hard for you to get into this position here, what you can do is grip a little, a little bit more narrow on the stick because it's not gonna have as much demand to kind of pull you forward. So from here, I'm gonna pull, so I'm gonna create tension on the stick by pulling the stick back with my shoulders, but bringing my chest up tall, right? So I want my chest to be nice and tall as I hold this position here. Now I'm gonna create a little bit of tension in the legs by compressing on the stick a bit, only about 20%, so you should feel activation on those adductors as you're in a stretch position. Breathe. Excellent, we're gonna ease off. So let off that tension nice and easy. Rotate the stick a bit, okay? We're gonna put it back where the arch is. And now, I'm actually gonna grab out a little wider. So now I'm gonna pull my, my torso forward a little bit more, which creates more demand. Get a bigger stretch on those adductors. You can do this if you want, or it can stick with the same position that you were at. So from here, same thing. I'm gonna pull on the stick, pull my shoulders. I don't necessarily wanna pull back with my arms. I wanna pull, use the leverage of the stick to get to an upright position. So from here, I'm in a little bit more of a leaned forward position here. 
compress on the stick a bit, lightly, right? <sighs> Gonna feel a heck of a stretch in those adductors. <sighs> now, what we can do, if you want a little bit more of a challenge, a little more of a stretch, pull your chest going down towards the stick. You're gonna breathe here. Three, two, one. We're gonna slowly ease off and come out. And that, my friends, concludes today's stick mobility class. Thank you everybody for joining me. Hope everybody had a good class. Again, we're kind of focusing on the hips this month and the hip health, so we're good. I hope everybody well, kind of understood everything. Everybody got the grasp of everything, but I'll catch y'all next weekend. Have a good one.